How to Attract Women with Humor The Demonstration Here's how you do it. Imagine this scene. I enter the softly lit club with great anticipation. The sensual sounds of a jazz quartet welcome me. The music is blending in with muffled conversations highlighted by an occasional outburst of laughter. Assorted eye candy adorns the room in the form of shapely, breathtaking babes and revealing outfits. The sexual tension in the air permeates my senses. I can't decide if the sensation comes from the vision of attractive women blended with their subtle notes of perfume wafting through the air, or the invisible scent from their pheromones of pent-up desires. I'm guessing both. Drinks are flowing freely and the place is starting to loosen up. The games have officially begun, I tell myself with a smile. The object of the game is to apply your social and dating skills in a hunt to locate and hook up with a mystery target who is yet to be identified somewhere in the crowd. The reward is an intoxicating sensation of your mental and physical pleasure centers lit up like flashing lights and ringing bells when you hit a jackpot on a slot machine. The trophy you'll get to take home is the yet unidentified mark. Matt McConaughey would be a high-value target for the women if he showed up tonight, but since it's highly unlikely he won't, I'm going to borrow his character. No one's going to know, and I'm sure he won't care. I glance at myself as I slowly pass by a mirror, and with my sexiest, most devilish grin I own, I say under my breath, All right, all right, all right. Wherever I am, that's the place to be. Now, it's showtime. I slowly enter the crowded main room with absolute confidence like a rock star walking on stage. I feel in harmony with my body language, attitude, and masculine energy. On the drive over, I mentally rehearsed my playlist and already imagined myself giving a successful performance with an encore. With my chin slightly up, I scan the room as if I'm about to select from the section of a catalog featuring a bunch of adoring groupies. The lucky winner in tonight's crowd will be the first worthy woman to show me an IOI, or indication of interest. I spot a gorgeous Latina giving me the eye and I employ the three second rule. I start my three second approach because I can tell she's open to my advance by her welcoming body language, facial expression, and eye contact. It looks like God himself just finished spray painting on her a revealing, form-fitting, sexy red dress that leaves very little to the imagination. She pretends to ignore the effect her visual display has on the plentiful number of onlookers, male and female. Imagine Sofia Vergara's younger sister. The chilled room causes her high beams to attract more eyeballs than moths fluttering to matching porch lights on a dark night, but I pretend not to notice them. My first thought is to rescue and release her ample breasts from the confining captivity of their tightly bound constraints. Only then can I comfort and console them with tender caresses and kisses because, after all, I am that sensitive, thoughtful type of guy. She is stunning. Her full, moist red lips perfectly match the color of her dress. Her lingering, seductive eyes cause in me a primal arousal that desires its fulfillment. But I temporarily put that thought on hold because I can't be distracted from my mission. I make my move. I tell myself to stay focused because this is where most amateurs typically fail. I'm not an amateur. She's chatting it up with a few girlfriends as she watches me approach. Then she flashes me the smile. All of a sudden it feels like I'm on stage under a spotlight. A hush comes over the room and I imagine everyone is now watching us out of the corners of their eyes trying to listen inconspicuously. They are waiting and wanting to see what's going to happen next because they know I'm about to make my move. I slowly stroll over and stand beside her as I look out at the crowd. 
I can feel her gaze and tension build slightly as I wait for just the right moment to ask her casually. So, do you know when the, uh, the attractive women are going to get here? Suddenly, as if the DJ loudly scratched the needle across her record, it seems like everything reverts to normal. The sounds return and our imagined audience goes back to what they were doing. Excuse me? She says as she looks at me up and down in disbelief. I keep a straight face as I calmly move from against the wall to face her at a 45 degree angle and I give her the eye triangle technique. I slowly look at her left eye over to her right then down to her luscious lips where I, I allow my eyes to linger for a few split seconds longer. I force myself to look into her captivating eyes instead of her amazing breasts, which, by the way, requires incredible discipline and restraint on my part. I was just testing you, I tell her with a slightly mischievous grin. <laughs> testing me for what? She laughs cautiously. To see how you would react. I'm doing some research for my work. Well, I'm glad to know you were just teasing. So, what kind of work do you do? I teach sign language to the blind. I tell her matter-of-factly while I admire the manicure on my right hand. She pauses a second to think and says with a quizzical look, You do what? You know. I then demonstrate by faking the hand signs to the YMCA song. <laughs> well, how can they see your hand signs if they are blind? <laughs> I look at her for a few seconds in mock disbelief. Because I sign in cursive, I tell her. I write cursive in the air with my finger, and I then look directly at her shaking my head. Duh. She playfully punches me in the arm. With my devilish grin, I tell her, But you really have to be careful when you flash signs, because one time some Mexican gang members came over wanting to know where I was from. Where are you from, S.A.? I tell her in a raspy voice, using my best gangster impression. My homeboys say they don't know where. And then I quickly repeat the hand sign again. Is. She cracks up and looks at me as if I'm crazy. I can tell we're starting to connect. I pause and use the triangle technique again. So enough about me. Tell me about yourself. What brings you out here? I ask her. And don't tell me your car. I don't know. I heard this is a good place to come, meet some new people, and maybe have a few laughs. Well, I don't know who told you that, but you've obviously been misinformed, I firmly tell her. This is supposed to be for adults. Didn't you see the no childish horseplay sign above the door? In fact, I happen to head up the no childish horseplay committee, so keep it clean. I'd hate to have to write you up. What brings you out here tonight, Mr. No Childish Horseplay? I have a two-seater moped, I tell her. You probably didn't see it out front because I had it valeted, but if you're nice, I just might take you for a ride on it later, I tell her with a serious wink. I feel an awkward moment of silence coming on, so I tell her with a slightly judgmental tone, I don't know if I should even be hanging out with you because... You know what they say about women who wear red dresses? Sensing a tease, she rolls her eyes and smiles. <laughs> no. What did they say? I lean in closer as if I'm genuinely serious, and I softly tell her, They say... I step back and look away, shaking my head. Never mind. I should have never brought it up. I chuckle. <laughs> you can't do that. What do they say? She insists, playfully tugging on my arm. I hesitate, and I weakly resist, and I finally say, Okay, okay. What they say is... I reach for her waist and gently pull her closer to smell her hair and whisper in her ear. They say... I pause again to lean back and look deeply into her eyes. You know... You might be attractive and cool, but I don't know if I can trust you with what they say. She laughs and says, <laughs> Oh, and why is that? <laughs> I give her the Clint Eastwood squint. I look at her quizzically and tell her, 
Because there's something really different about you, but I haven't figured it out yet. You're like a mystery. A mystery? <laughs> a mystery? What are you talking about? No, no, no. Now you're trying to change the subject. Why do you think I'm a mystery? And don't think I'm going to forget to ask you about what they say. Now you're just trying to mess with my head and confuse me. I move in closer again as if I'm about to share a secret. With my hand on her waist, I subtly guide and isolate her from her friends. At the same time, I move her so she is now facing only me with my back against the wall. It now looks like she just pinned me against the wall this maneuver causes the other women nearby to take notice, but she's not aware of it because her back is to everyone. This one subtle move now makes me seem more desirable to the rest of the women watching, as I notice more of them starting to watch me. I tell her, you're a mystery because you're hard to figure out, but I will. Just give me some time. In fact, I'd nickname you Mr. E. But since I can clearly see you're not a mister, I approvingly look her up and down again. I think you'd make a perfectly good mistress, E. But mistress implies we're having an affair. She says coquettishly. And so I wait for her response. Remember, I admonish her. No childish horseplay. She senses I'm verbally baiting her into a trap, and I can see her mind carefully searching for just the right words. Okay, I'll be Mistress E, if you'll be Mr. No Childish Horseplay. <laughs> but only if you tell me what they say first. Okay, I'll tell you what, Mistress E. Let's make this interesting. If you think you can correctly guess what they say, or even close to it, I'll invite you over to my place to pop some grade A bubble wrap I've been saving up for just a special occasion. That is, of course, if you promise to behave yourself. What? Now let me get this straight. You're going to invite me over to your place just to give me the pleasure of popping some of your personal stash of bubble wrap? Wow, you're slipping me off my feet. But I will only come over on one condition. And that's only if I get to pop all of it. Wow, that's a pretty aggressive counter-proposal. You drive a hard bargain. I'll have to think about it, I tell her with a smirk. On the other hand, if you can't guess correctly, then... To be continued. <laughs>